The Properties palette controls the individual properties and displays the individual properties of different things inside of a Revit project environment. Now the Properties palette itself is located over here at the side and it has three distinct different areas associated with it. The bar going across the top is called the Type Selector List. The second part is directly below the Type Selector List, and this is your Instance Properties. The third spot, technically not on this bar, but the button to get to it is, is called Edit Type. And Edit Type allows you to get to the type properties of an individual object. Now, let's go ahead and review what each one of these does and how it affects your Revit model. To do this, I'd like to change a couple of the doors that are inside of our bathroom currently. And we can find that bathroom right in this area over here between the blue and the green colors. Our best bet is to be able to zoom in on that area. So simply somewhere out here in the white area, click once, that activates the view, move your cursor so it's right in the area where that bathroom is located at, and now move the wheel on your mouse, just spin it up. And that will allow you to zoom in on the bathroom area. If you'd like to see it centered a little bit better on the screen, simply hold the wheel down on the mouse and then move the mouse just a little bit in order to be able to center the bathroom a little bit better on your screen. Now we can see that there's two doors that lead either in or out of the bathroom. One is door number 103 and the other is door number 104. Now these are the exact same type of door, so they share the exact same structural properties as well as sizes but they have different numbers. So this is door 103 and door number 104. Now we can see what the type properties of these doors are by selecting on the door itself and taking a look over here at the type selector list. The type selector list is really a pull down menu. And if you click where this door shows up, we can now see the different types of doors which are loaded into our project. This particular project only has three different types of doors loaded into it. And the reason why this is called the type selector list is you can select which type of door that you want to use inside of your project off of the list. In this case, just to show the difference, move your mouse down and select on the numbers underneath M double flush. This is going to give us a double door that's going to be leading into the bathroom. As we can see, this door is way too wide. It's not going to fit into the bathroom but we can see that we now have that double door type placed here inside of our wall. Now let's go ahead and change this back to the original type that it was. So once again, come over to the type selector list and choose on the numbers 800 by 2100. And this will change it back to that type of door. So the rule of thumb of the type selector list is it's gonna allow you to be able to change a door or any kind of object inside of Revit from that type of object or that size of object to a different size or a different type. Directly underneath the type selector list, you have your instance properties. Your instance properties will only affect that specific thing that you have selected. In this case, I have a door selected and it has a mark number or a door number called 103. If we would change to be 199, you notice it won't immediately apply it underneath the view, but if you click on either apply or just move your cursor under the view, that door will become door number 199. So just this instance of this type of door has become door number 199. You notice it didn't change this door down here. Go ahead and move your mouse back over here to the mark and change it back to 103. Now we can see it's changed that information back to door number 103, but perhaps we want to be able to change both of these doors and their properties simultaneously. This is how you can do it. Move your cursor up and select on Edit Type. Once edit type is up, these are the type properties of the door. That means that each of these doors have this type of property associated with it. And even though only one of these doors is highlighted, because they're the exact same type of door, and this is the type properties, it's going to make the change to both doors. In this case, move down here to where it has width, and let's shrink these doors down, and we should see the doors get smaller on the screen. So instead of width being 800, change this down to a width of being a rather small 600 and then click on the apply button in the lower right hand side of the dialog box. We can now see that the door has in fact shrunk in both locations. Do the same thing again except bring this back up to the 800 it was originally and once again click on apply. Notice how both doors got bigger? It's because for this type of door 
the properties changed, and every place this type of door throughout the entire project was located at, it's now changed these properties for that type of door. Go ahead and click on OK to this. So it's important to remember what the properties allow you to do. One is it will list what the properties of the objects that you currently have selected are. Also, each area has its own function. The type selector list will allow you to choose which type of door is placed or which type of object is placed in that location. The instance property portion will allow you to change the properties specific to that one kind of object. In this case, it allowed us to change the door number in one location. And the type properties, which is located underneath edit type, will universally change the properties of that type of object throughout the entire project.